Now, this is Internet Explorer version 5, and I've implemented PyMenus in JavaScript configured with XML and using dynamic HTML as to display. And the nice thing about that is that we get the full capabilities of the web browser, which are pretty nice these days. And we can pop up submenus that have graphics in them of this, this very silly, simple example. And even the web browser supports things like transparency for Pi items. So when I go and point it west, everything else becomes transparent. And uh, just an easy little thing that only takes a few lines to implement. And um, now here's an example of being able to have a callback that gets notified every time you move that can look at the direction that you're in and the distance. And as you'll notice, you know, as I go out further, I've got more precise control over that direction. And um, you know, so this can be used like a dial. Now, the um, here's another thing that shows the control you have over formatting. Each item can have its own radius that it's laid out at, so you can make interesting, weird little things. Now, uh, one thing, the active area of the Pi menu is a wedge shape that goes out to the edge of the screen. But the first thing it checks is to see whether you're actually in one of the rectangles. So this wedge shape here goes out and then zigzags around where these guys define the target. So if you, pay, if you point at the item that you obviously mean to select it more than uh, uh, what otherwise you'd get based on the angle. So um, the nifty thing here um, what we can do is have some notifiers on the web page that go back and change the style of the content of the web page based on the user input. So this is a sample of some text, and I'll pop up a pie menu, and I can change the weight, the um, color, the style, and the size. So I'll select size. And I, this is a pullout, and I, the further out I pull, the bigger it gets, and I see the feedback immediately. Now, um, the weight is a two-item menu, up and down, that operates like a light switch, and with immediate feedback. And the color is four items, and I get feedback right away. And the style is italic and bold, same as that. So um, you can, um, not only can these items modify the HTML on the page, but it can modify the HTML in the menu center to provide feedback too. Um, now, uh, another uh, example that uses some more ornate graphics is um, somebody else developed this wonderful Punkamon trading card set of graphics. And um, what, it, what he made was a whole bunch of little animated GIFs that represent Punkamon characters. So this menu lets you browse the different lands that they live in. And then when you select um, you know, when you point at them, these are live animated GIFs in there, um, and you select the submenu, up pops this four item menu that's using the center of the menu to just to show the character. So if I select this guy here, now it's going to go to a menu that tells me about that character, and actually that center is the center of the menu, and it's got a giant item down at the bottom that's not used as input, but is used just to display um, this guy's likes and dislikes. So you're really using the menu as a sort of pop-up informative dialogue that you can browse around to. So, like, for example, I can, I can pop back a level and then go see some of the other guys and just explore the land. And uh, this, this guy is my favorite. So, that's the Punkachu. Now, uh, this was inspired by some research at MIT Media Labs. Um, this is a demonstration of Pi menus that try to guess what your second choice would be. So um, when I click up, it allows me to select my favorite color. Let me zoom in here. So, well, I think it's blue, no, red. Okay, so it says, I think your favorite color is red, but I guess your second favorite color is blue. And that's based on the fact that when I popped it up, 
even though I selected red, I spent the most time selecting blue. So people tend to browse the pie menus like this, looking at things, and then when they find what they like, they click it, but then they'll pause to consider things. So even I can click up the menu, go yellow, oh no, no, I'll just cancel it. And now it's, it's guessing that my favorite color is yellow, although I didn't select one. So this is a really simple, elegant idea that I applied to pie menus, um, and it can be applied to a lot of other things and used for e-commerce and um, you know art galleries or whatever. Um, now, now the really convenient thing for uh, user interface designers is that the way these pie menus are specified in XML markup language. Um, this test pie menu has eight items here, and North has a sub menu with four items. Now that maps very nicely into an XML tree of it has a pie menu element and it has name and ID and then it has, beneath thing is you can put arbitrary HTML inside of the XML and that is just copied and just dumped right into the middle of the menu to make it look any way you want and then the menu uh, this pie menu item contains besides this stuff to display in the middle an item it contains eight items and this item's name is north and that's that's its name to the program which could be different and that's what is displayed to the user here now it contains a sub pie menu which is the north menu and has even more so you can see how you can intersperse xml and html to specify all this that you need to describe for the pie menu and um, one of the really great advantages of using xml for the pie menu is that there are many ways to generate xml and many things that are represented by XML that you might want to make menus for. So in the case of the Punkamon pie menus, I really didn't want to make all those pie menus uh, directly. So maybe I'm making a card game and I have this XML file that I use to, to print all the cards and, and maybe do the online game and everything. So I've defined the, the markup language for Punkamon cards. So there's the Punkaverse contains Punka land where they live and that contains a bunch of Punkamons. Now all these give information that is needed to make the menu for that. So it's an application specific markup uh, style and it's uh, it, but it has information for menus in it. So basically all this gets translated uh, get on the right page into all of this um, very automatically by XSL style sheet that's um, a macro language for XML that takes the nice uh, clean to the point Punkamon XML file and then transforms it into a pie menu tree and a web page that pops that pie menu up so that um, basically the um, Punkamon says, hey, this is my style sheet. If you want to display me, run me through this style sheet. And what that style sheet does is expand to a web page with a title, says what it is. And then the nice part is this is how a web designer puts the pie menu on the page. You make a div, which is like a, just a section. And I'm giving it a width and a height. And I give it a behavior. Um, the behavior attaches this JavaScript code to it and allows it to receive input events and translate them to a higher level semantics and then send these output events like the, the pie menu changed and it's going to call my JavaScript function that's on this web page to handle it. So now this div is the thing that's presented on the page that you click on. So it's got a, a, a little picture of the island there. Now, inside the div, besides its presentation, is an XML data island, which is just embedded XML that instead of being dis, um, displayed on the page, is just data that can be referred to. So the pie menu looks in there, finds an XML, pulls out the pie menu definition in it, um, and uses it. So you can pack these things nicely together. You can also point to another file that contains the pie menus 
externally. But in this case, we're going to have them in line. So the Punkamon Pi menu contains the words Punkamon Pi menus, and then it uses the XSL macro language to loop over all of the Punka lands, making items for each one of them. And it that item is made by extracting fields from that Punkalon and just sticking them into HTML as either properties or content. And um, so you can get the value of the name of this guy and stick it into that guy and put a bold marker around it and make a div. So basically, this is just a bunch of nested loops that loops over the database and renders it out as dynamic uh, HTML embedded in a Pi menu tree, embedded in a web page. And it works. So <laughs> um, that's what you're seeing over here. Um, and there's a lot of other really neat applications of automatically generating your Pi menus or any other kind of user interface um, from an XML specification that could also be used for a lot of other things. Um, and you, you're just describing your data in one place and then um, algorithmically rendering it out to all sorts of other things. So.